I'm Dave from boyintheband.com and today I'll be showing you how to make a heavy drum tone in Superior Drummer 2, ideal for metal productions that'll sound something like this. So as you heard I've got a nice little metal-y loop here to work with with plenty of kicks and not too much snare. Depending on how quick your tracks are, you'll probably want to vary the snare. Slower stuff doesn't come across too well with big ringy snares like this one. So try the snappier ones, perhaps the Rogers Wood snare, with a little less compression. And even the piccolo, pitched down a bit, with this pitch section down here, can work quite well too. Now, as a starting point, we're going to make sure that the drum kit we've got is the full kit, and all mixer is set to default. So, so we've just got that blank slate. If Kim Jong-il has taught me anything, it's that blank slates can be moulded into pretty much anything you want. So don't give your country access to the internet. Uh, I mean, don't, don't work from a different preset. So first things first, I'm going to mute the other two kick mics in the mixer. If you have a listen. I want a nice clean kick with no muddiness and I find it's a lot easier to do that with just one mic to worry about. Now onto the kick itself, we're going to add an EQ. For metal it's going to take quite a lot of EQing to make a kick that's heavy enough. So first we're going to bring up the top end by about 6 decibels at 6 kilohertz and we're going to take the Q down to about 2. And that's just going to bring up that top end little bit clickier now. Now the kick needs to have a lot of presence in the lower frequencies below 100 Hz too, but not so much above that since that's usually where the bass will start to live around that 100 Hz, 200 Hz region in the mix. So we bring up by a ridiculous amount the lower end, we're going to take it up by about yeah, 12 decibels around 30 Hz just like that and we're going to make it a little less wide and just bring up that Q to 1. So take a listen now, without, and with. You can hear it's really starting to punch now. Now to tidy things up for that bass when we start, if you ever decide to put a bass in the mix, we'll take down 100 hertz by about 5 decibels and 4Q, so it's a reasonable pun. And finally, to remove the boxiness of the kick, if you ever listen, and make it sound more modern, we're going to bring right down by at around uh, 370 hertz, just by full, so 18, but we're going to make it a little bit less than 0.5q, so bring it up, yeah, 1.3q is cool, take a listen. It's all low end and high end, so you get that click and that thud, and you've got plenty of space in the mix for the rest of the instruments to sit. So without the EQ, and with. So there's the tone of the kick. Next we're going to add a compressor. And we're going to have a threshold of minus 10 decibels. And bring that ratio, yeah that's fine. And 10 milliseconds attack is also cool. Take a listen to that now. Without. And with. You can hear it slightly squashes it, letting only that first hit of it through, and then bringing the end up a little bit. Next, let's play with the snare. Add a really similar compression, it's going to be a little bit harsher on the snare, with a minus 15 threshold. And we're going to bring the release down to 50 so the end can really be heard. So without, and with. But most of the change is going to come from EQing. So we're just going to add an EQ and gently boost for the low end around 200 hertz. Yeah, by about six, seven decibels. And bring that Q up as well. Just so it's focused around that 200 hertz area. And that makes the snare really thud nice and hard in the lower end. And we're going to brighten it up to compensate with a tiny boost at around 2.3 kilohertz, or 2.5 will do. 
and we're gonna again we're gonna bring that Q down to 1.3 so it's kind of wide but we're gonna do the majority of it with this one here having a nice shelf from 4 kilohertz but we're going to have it about yeah 8 to 9 decibels so it's nice and wide now take a listen without and with hear how that snare cracks I'll solo it out this uh, mic so without and with there we go so that's much clearer now we're going to adjust the levels so the kick and the snare are a bit louder than everything else so let's bring up this snare You want them to be a similar kind of level, and if it starts to clip or anything, just bring that master volume down. We're going to turn the hats down a little bit as well. And we're going to do some routing. So we're going to route the kick, snare, hats, cymbals and room mics to separate buses over here. Like I'll do now in fast motion with some unnecessary drum and bass. we go and as you can see all that was was just clicking this output at the bottom and selecting the bus you want and then we're going to route these into another bus channel we're going to go for bus 10 so it's nice and a round number and then finally since if we press space we can't hear anything we're going to route bus 10 into output 1 Okay, now all the routing's done, we can do any final level adjustments. Make sure it's not too ambient and roomy, so if we have a listen, we've got the uh, ambience there. Just bring that down if you want it more clinical, or up if you want it roomier. So let's bring it down a little bit. And we want to make sure that the snare is at a similar level to the kick. down a tad because it's varying quite a bit and then all we want for those overheads is to shimmer patiently in the background like Stephanie Mayer's ideal husband now for the big change we're going to turn on up here bus 10's send to bus 11 so it's going to go through both bus 11 and bus 10 make sure that output is on output 1 and then add a compressor with everything ridiculously high except for ratio which is on limit rather than over watch what happens when I put it on over rather than limit if I take the makeup gain up to full so you can hear it and solo it out just starts to sound like some kind of weird Martian radio station and a gong but if we take it to limit it just completely crushes the sound now, listen to what happens when we dial some of this into the mix. Much more full sounding, right? So, with it and without it. This technique is called parallel compression and is freaking awesome on percussive sounds. As you notice, the cymbals there got really crushed and kind of over compressed for that crash out. If you want to avoid that, you can always just route the cymbals directly to output 1 rather than sending them through bus 10, which would mean they'd get compressed in bus 11 as well. So I'll just do that quickly to show you. And there we go, a metal sounding kit in Superior Drummer 2. Enjoy! <laughs> If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boiner Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave P. Brown. And if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boiner Band forum at boinerband.com forum and sign up so you can share your songs to get new fans and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day!